Did you notice the screen has switched off? Continuity error. Hey there everybody, I hope you're doing well. In today's video I'm going to basically create an animation in Dulux Paint on your Amiga just by screwing around in hand mode. It's just meant to be a bit of fun. There's no real sort of like tutorial in this so you know you can watch this for inspiration but I'm not necessarily going to explain everything down to the nth degree although there is a fair amount of explanation. So many of you will know that uh, my emphasis at the moment is working on my upcoming manga, uh, Future Saviors, of which the first chapter is not far off of ready for release now. So keep your eyes open for that. Uh, if you want to find out more about that, just follow the links in the video description. But I always carry a sketchbook around with me where I just, you know, note down ideas that come to my mind. Some are more polished than others, like this uh, image that I drew on the 11th of March, uh, which I sort of dubbed the Survivor. And others are just a lot looser, you know, they're a lot less, you know, sort of finished and all the rest of it, just to capture a mood. But sometimes when I'm working on uh, the script for the manga and so forth, I mean, I know the storyline and I know what's going to happen. I was thinking about a particular scene, it's not going to happen in the first chapter, but quite soon after the beginning of the manga, and I sort of came up with this, with uh, Saki, uh, one of my main characters, and it occurred to me that it might be a bit of fun, apart from obviously drawing it properly uh, as a series of obviously uh, manga panels and that for the manga, but to screw around with it in pixel art, uh, in Dulux Paint, and take advantage of the Amiga's ham mode. Um, now ham, I'm not going to go into it in any great uh, detail in this video. I'm going to leave a link uh, in the video description where you can watch a video where I explained it in full. Um, but basically it's a clever mode that allowed a computer that was released well over 30 years ago now to display over 4,000 colours on screen at a time where most computers were either monochrome or at very best could probably show about 16 colours in really low resolution. So, um, so basically using that mode it comes with various artefacts and so forth that look like distortion in a way. So I'm going to make use of that. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of the drawing process, like for example here obviously I drew uh, the picture that you saw in my sketchbook properly with uh, actual ink and Copic markers and I'm going to show you a little bit of that. But recently, um, one of my videos recently I showed you my colour manga process, so again links will be in the video description. So I think without more waffle, let's just get straight on into it. Oh, and just very quickly, this is not going to be a specific tutorial, like this is how you do this. There will be a lot of explanation of the processes, but to be honest with you, a lot of this is me using my knowledge of how Dulux Paint works and just screwing about with it and seeing what comes out in the wash, to be honest with you. I think that's maybe the message of this video. Just have a bit of fun with it. Use that technology that you've got at your fingertips. Okay, yes, that's enough. <laughs> So I'm not going to labour this part of the video because I've covered my various drawing techniques and so forth um, you know, a number of times in recent videos and so what I've got here is essentially just a sketchbook where I just jot down ideas that come into my mind um, you know, relating to my characters and future saviours and there was this image here which is relating to something that's going to happen quite early on in the manga and I've been thinking of ways that I can illustrate um, sort of messages where. So what I've got here is a picture of Saki and it's sort of imitating this idea um, um, of sort of videotape being rewound kind of thing. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this because it's, it's actually, um, you know, I'm very happy with this. I'm just going to extend it so it's full body onto Copic paper. Then I'm going to shade that using Copic markers. So I might show you a little bit of the shading with Copic markers, but again, I've recently covered that, and I will endeavour to remember to put a link, uh, I believe, in this corner uh, with a link to those uh, relevant videos. Okay, let's crack on. Meanwhile, a little while later, I have completed the inked outline of the image, and you can see how I've extended, basically, uh, the picture to include Saki's legs. So um, it's not a perfect inking, but it doesn't need to be. Nothing ever needs to be perfect, and nothing ever is perfect. Um, but basically, what I can now do is take the Copic markers, like so, and shade this in. So, but before that, I'm going to make a cup of tea. I think I'm just going to have a little bash on Donkey Kong, which I'm really enjoying on the Game Boy at the moment. <laughs> Okay, 
I've got back from the awesome. I've got my scan of the Saki Rewind image. So the next step before I take this into Dulux Paint to the Amiga side of things is to adjust this scan so that it's the best it can be before it's uh, processed on the pixel art side of things. So what I'm namely going to do is adjust the curves on this image just to bring out the colours as much as possible and try and get the blacks looking as black as possible. So I'm going to show you how I do that. <laughs> This is a scan of the Saki Rewind image and immediately you can see it's quite low in contrast but that's all to be expected because that's how I set the scan to be. I prefer to do it like this because then I can preserve as much as subtlety about the colour as possible. So I'm first of all going to use the curves tool. Um, I've previously talked about this but you can see down here this is the, the darker tones of the image and there's very little um, at this edge uh, meaning that these are not really true blacks they're just sort of dark greys. And what you can do is if you tick this show clipping, you can drag in this edge here and you can start to see where the various channels of the colors begin to clip. So in this case, you've got um, uh, only part of the, the color spectrum clipping, but once it starts going black, you can see that that is basically getting clipped. So I can switch this off and you can see that this is now a much purer black. Um, and likewise, I want to do the same thing with the white. So if I uh, turn on the clipping again, you can start seeing where we're starting to clip out some of the detail from the shading of Saki's uh, skin tone. So um, I think I'm going to try leaving that where that is. Now for my taste, we've slightly got a little bit too much of like the boldness of the colour coming through. So what I find tends to work quite well is to just bring it a little bit in here. So I'm still quite happy with the level of blacks here with the, uh, the rucksack straps. And I'm just going to slightly pull in these blacks, uh, or this part of the curve, sorry, so that some of the darker tones are like the, the, the shadow of uh, Saki's hair, this mauve shade is coming through. But what I find works quite well is to introduce a slight S shape to the curve. And what this will do is it will begin to brighten up some of the less um, sort of darker parts of the colouring so that we end up with less contrast in those colours. Um, so for example, in the skin tones and that. So that's about where I'm happy with it, to be honest with you. So it's a very gentle S-shaped curve, but each image is going to be different depending on what colours you've used. But that's pretty much where I want it to be. I mean, obviously you can take it even less contrasty in those lighter tones, but I prefer to leave a little bit of the saturation in the colours. So that's where I'm going to pretty much leave it. Okay, and I'm just going to change the resample image size to bicubic smoother and I'm going to choose a width of 290. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually shade in this background now. So I've just got this transparent layer here and I've got this sort of slightly navy blue tone here. So I'm just going to uh, fill that like so and you can see that it all looks nice. So, and then I'm going to take this into index color mode. I don't actually have to do this uh, with Dulux Paint 5, for example, but I'm not sure how well Dulux Paint 4 and Dulux Paint 4 AGA cope with this. I think 4 AGA is fine with 24-bit images, um, but I'm just going to use index color. I'm going to reduce this to 256 colors, and I'm just going to force the black and white just to make sure those are in there. So I've not really lost any detail. There's just not enough colors in this image to really show that. Maybe if it was a photograph, it would be a different matter. So that's now all ready to save out for the Amiga side of things. So I'm just going to do File, Save As. I'm going to create a new folder here um, just because um, uh, this will save me getting mixed up with my earlier files. And I'm going to change the format to if format. And I'm just going to call this Sucky uh, Rewind. 256 Amiga. There we go. I'm going to obviously confirm that the platform is Amiga and that will save that out. So that's now ready to take into Dulux Paint. So the next thing you're going to see is uh, the Amiga side of things, which is emulated in my case. Okay, so this is now on the Amiga side of things. So I'm just going to load up Dulux Paint 4 AGA. What I'm doing today will work in other applications like Brilliance, but if you're using Dulux Paint, um, particularly on the Amiga, um, you'll need to uh, make sure you have uh, version 4 and above because version 3 doesn't support um, hand mode. Um, you can obviously do this kind of stuff in a more modern application like A-Sprite, but the actual mechanics of it are going to be quite different. So. Um, I'm just going to use a hand screen mode, uh, set the palette size to 16 so that I'll use uh, the OCS and ECS version of ham, known as ham 6. 
Um, I'm going to say no to changing the format because I want to retain hand mode. And that's just going to take a few seconds to load in. The speed of this is all going to be down to which Amiga you're using. So if you're using a stock Amiga 600, expect this kind of stuff to be slow. And if you're using something like uh, uh, an Amiga 1200 with an 060, it's going to be a lot faster. So first of all, I'm going to make sure that the blue is um, the same across the whole piece in the background. So, so I just use the eyedropper tool. So the comma key and left click will choose that color. I'm just going to make sure that the title bar area is filled in because obviously that's what Deluxe Paint doesn't fill in. Okay, great. So that's looking good. Um, now I want to manipulate this image a lot more obviously. I want to shade uh, Sucky uh, so that I'm going to create these kind of almost these um, almost uh, retro wave inspired um, sort of blurs, sort of phasing effects. So we've got like a, a green and a, a, a magenta tone. So Okay, so what I need to do is create two copies of Saki that are tinted, uh, one with a green and one with a magenta tone. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a stencil that allow me to just shade in Saki here. Again, this is something that I could have done in Photoshop, but this is me having some fun in Deluxe Paint. So I'm going to go to Effect, Stencil and Make. Now you can use Shift and Apostrophe. Uh, that's the apostrophe with the tilde in it as well. But this will bring up this request. Now this looks a little bit different in uh, Deluxe Paint 5, but the, the principle is the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm first of all going to click on the uh, the dark indigo, like so, and I'm going to click show, because that will show me basically what has been selected. Okay, great. And I'm going to make sure that the tolerance is set to zero. So basically um, it means that uh, any any area that I paint um, which matches this, this light tone here, is not going to be affected. So I'm going to click, uh, maybe I'm going to just try fine tune. Uh, these bits aren't going to really be shown, but you never know, this might, might work. So let's click on that. Okay, great. Uh, so that has helped with those little areas, and maybe possibly with these areas here as well. So let's just try that. Fine tuning is not always possible because Ultimately, if the RGB values are the same, this won't work. So, okay, I think that's about as good as we're going to get it, and that's fine enough for me. So I'm going to click Make. And just to show you how the stencil works, I've got this uh, green shade selected here. I've just got the free hand tool. I've just got a big fat brush. And you'll see that basically I can paint over Sucky, but not over the background. Now, the only problem with this is it's not actually tinting. It's just literally painting that thick colour. So what I need to do is go to Effect. And let's go to translucency. I'm going to turn it on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to effect and I'm going to go to process and I'm just going to turn this on. So it's going to tint uh, the tones with this uh, green. So as I paint over, you'll see that it doesn't erase the detail, but it's just shading with this greenish tone, which works rather well. So all pretty good. Now the thing is you want to do this all in one go because otherwise it will just build up as you'd imagine the transparency laid over a top of transparency makes it even more you know uh, less opaque as it were so or more opaque whichever way around it goes so i'm just going to reduce the translucency a little maybe to about 25 something like that i can't choose 25 for some reason just because it means that there'll be more of this green okay so you can see how that's a much more sort of uh, intense green so to make sure I paint this all in one go, I'm going to use the filled rectangle. I'm going to hide the toolbars with Shift and F10, or just F10, sorry. And I'm just going to paint over the top. Now, you may think, oh no, it's not going to do what I want, but just let it go over the top and it will shade this particular version of Saki, in my case, uh, in this green tone. So. I'm just going to let that happen, and I'm going to do the same thing but create a magenta version. So, pretty neat, huh? You bet you didn't think you could do this kind of image processing uh, in Duet's Paint, huh? And now the fringing is something that I really want to take advantage of. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I'm messing around in Duet's Paint today. Okay, I've got these um, two versions of Saki now overlaid on each other, So, but I'm just going to bring down the brightness a bit of them. So again, I'm just using the process options with the value, fiddle about with the stencils, and what I should be able to do is just bring down intensity of these colours a bit. So 
Let's do this. There we go. And let Deluxe Paint get to work. Okay, great. Now I'm going to flip back to my spare screen where I've still got my copy of uh, the original Saki, full colour version, if you will. There we go. I'm going to flip back here. Now I'm going to make sure that my stencil is turned off and I can use Alt and T and Alt and P to turn off the, um, uh, the translucency and process options. And what I can do is I can place her down somewhere in the middle of these two sort of uh, colour phases as it were. So maybe somewhere. Yeah, that looks good. Now she's overlaid. Great. So that's a little bit of basic image processing using uh, Deluxe Paint there. So that's pretty cool. I've just noticed that actually the edge of her shoe here is not quite tinted properly. So I'm just going to rework that. Okay, that's now all sorted out. So what I want to do is just create a slightly ghost version of Saki here. So I'm just going to adjust the transparency. I'm just going to bring this down to maybe about, f maybe let's try 50, somewhere in the middle. Not that I can choose 50 anymore, but there you go. Um, <laughs> so uh, sometimes Deluxe Paint 4 AJ is a bit quirky with its sliders like that. I'm going to make sure that processing and transparency is turned on. Uh, I'm just going to use tint again. I'm going to switch that stencil back on now. I hope. Yeah, I think that's pretty much what I want. So it's quite, quite vivid. Okay, so I'm just going to select all of this. Okay, great. Now this is exactly the effect that I was looking for because I'm actually making use of hands, sort of like slightly frayed edges and so forth. Now, okay, so I switched the stencil back on and I'm just going to plonk down this uh, sort of. Uh, rather blue, almost as if it was, what was the character out of um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, wasn't it? Um, Violet, I think it was. <laughs> okay, I'm stamping down these brushes now, and I've created 24 frames of uh, animation. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slightly horizontally uh, warp uh, Saki as, as if the, there is that sort of wobbling going uh, with the sort of the rewind process, as it were. Um, so the way that I'm going to do this, I've noted down the position which I've been stamping down the brush, which you can see in the top right there, 199 across by 179 from the bottom, as it were. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to brush, uh, a bend, and I'm going to choose horizontal. Okay. And what I can do is I can just slightly warp the brush. And as soon as I left click, you'll see that I get these different coordinates at the top there. So I'm just going to bring this in by maybe a couple of pixels or so, maybe three pixels. And I'm just going to let Dirk's Paint warp the brush a bit. Okay, so after a little bit of messing around with the uh, brush and bend option, which allows you to sort of bend the brushes as I was explaining, I've managed to create this rather cool looking sort of glitch effect, which is what I was looking for, this kind of, I don't know, I don't know the technical terms to describe it, but sometimes when you sort of um, pause the picture on VHS tape, the, it was almost like the picture would wobble. Um, and um, so I know that this isn't really an artifact of rewinding tape, but this is just me throwing stuff because it's in my imagination and I just want to try it out. So by doing that and copying the frames, which is a little bit laborious, I've managed to come up with this sort of rather funky glitch effect here. I think that looks pretty cool. So um, there's literally just one frame where I've um, not copied it. So it's sort of just the, the colour version of Saki there. But I think that actually looks really cool. And I've kind of slightly randomised the order that I copied the frame so that the, the second half of the sequence isn't the reverse of the first half, as it were. It's, it's just a little bit jumbled and it really kind of works. It gives it a sort of the feel that it's not just entirely on a loop. And then when I add any other aspects of this, I think it's going to look rather awesome, actually. So really pleased with that. And the way that I did that, again, was to use the stencil painting underneath the colour version of Saki there. 
Okay, I'm making some really solid progress with this now. So what I've done is I've just drawn a bunch of horizontal lines with various shades of grey up to white. Um, and then I've just chopped bits out and all the rest of it and I can take any chunk of this. And then on the main picture, using the transparency, I've been able to stamp down the, the effect of... You know how you used to sort of press play on a videotape and then you would hit rewind, you would see all these glitchy effects. So with um, stamping down uh, this brush with some transparency, you can see how I can alter uh, the intensity of that. And over the top of the, uh, the animation or the, the image rather that we've got here as Saki, um, we can affect sort of like some really interesting sort of glitch effects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a few here on screen. Uh, maybe here. I'm actually just going to make sure the toolbar's turned off because that's always a problem with Dulux Paint. There we go. So just some random stuff there. And then when I play this animation, you can see how it's got this wonderful glitchy quality. Looks good. And you can see some of the hand fringing artifacts over the top of like the ghost sucky where uh, the, the static is uh, playing havoc almost with the... Um, uh, skateboard on the back because there's more darker colours there so the hand ramping is going a bit haywire wire. but actually that's I quite like that um, I'm okay with that that's kind of what I want to see with this uh, animation in a way um, I want it to be unexpected that's why I'm using hand mode rather than uh, a pixel perfect sort of uh, version as it were so yeah this is looking pretty cool now so there's just a few bits that I want to uh, slightly tweak about this One. okay really definitely getting somewhere now so Again, what I've done on my spare screen is I created this sort of um, pattern, which I'm going to have scroll backwards across the screen. And I'm going to go to probably frame 12, which is in the middle of this animation. And I'm just going to... I've got my stencil switched on so that this doesn't overlay. So you'll see that when I switch the stencil off, it actually goes over the top of the characters. But for this, I think I'm just going to have go behind them. So I'm just going to switch that stencil back on again. And I'm just going to stamp it down about here. That'll do. Undo that. And then I'm going to bring up the move requester. And I'm going to have this go 320 pixels across in that direction. And I'm going to have it do 12 frames here. You can see in the count. So I'm going to draw that. And what will happen is, is that this, this brush will move in its entirety, um, basically, um, in 12 frames. So what will happen is that we'll have this um, sort of like backward scrolling effect and it will there won't be sort of like a blank part of the screen at this point in the animation, so... And I'm going to do something slightly different for the um, the first 12 frames, just to give it that sense of randomness. And likewise, I'm also going to do it for the bottom half of the screen. Okay, now we're getting a bit of a sense that this is a, a videotape being rewound. Funky, huh? And all of this, apart from the actual drawing itself, which was pen and ink and, well, pencil, ink and Copic marker and obviously digitally scanned in uh, Lawson and then, um, you know, slightly tweaked in the curve sense in Photoshop. But apart from that, everything else here has been done in Dirx Paint. So, yeah, Dirx Paint doesn't just have to be for um, creating images from scratch or pixel art sprites and stuff or whatever. It can also be used for image manipulation and and of course, obviously, it's famed animation capability, so, yeah. This is turning out better than I expected. Um, I know it sounds a bit like a humble brag, but um, honestly, um, I had this idea in my head, and I had this feeling that hand mode on your Amiga might be the way to go for it, and, um, yeah, I'd say this is turning out better than I expected. So that's all good news. I'm really pleased with the way that the ghost sucky is kind of glitching in the background. That, I think, really adds to it, so, yeah. Okay, so I think I've added enough effects now. I think if I add any more, it will just overdo it, to be honest with you. So I think that's just about right. Gives a sense of motion going backwards. And there's just one little final touch that I want to make to this. So I'm just going to switch to the spare screen. And I'm going to load in something that I um, saved earlier on. 
I'm not going to change the screen format. And what I've got here is basically like a, a the on-screen display message for Rewind. So let's just pick this as the background colour so that it's transparent. I'm going to take this and I'm going to restore the palette. Uh, colour. A little bit slow. Palette. Restore. There it is. Okay. I'm going to turn the stencil off so this sits on top. And I'm going to choose uh, a white colour or near as damn it, and I'll use the colour mode. And what I can do is I can place this over the top. Let's see how that looks. Doesn't look too bad actually. What if I just use the map mode and then if I remap the brush? Let's just see. Ah, that's better. Okay, so what I can do, first of all, let's use that colour mode. I've got a strange screen artifact going on there. Maybe if I switch away from... No, nope, that's great. I actually pasted that down somehow. I get that sometimes through the emulation. I'm not sure why it is. That's not ideal, but... Um... Okay, so it's, it's a new day, and I managed to finish this yesterday. Um, now, I think where I left off, um, I had a bit of a glitch with Dulux Paint, where... For some reason, when I went to use the menus, it actually stamped part of the brush down. But I decided just to embrace that because that's the whole point of this uh, animation in a way. It is all about the glitch, shall we say, and I just worked around it, really, to be honest with you. That was the whole point of, um, I could have done this in a sprite using transparency and so forth and come to maybe some similar effects and so forth. Um, I could have even done it in Photoshop, you know, so there's no real reason um, to necessarily expect it to be perfect. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this in Dulux Paint and Amiga was to embrace the the quirks of the hand mode where you get fringing as the colour ramps up and so forth. Um, but anyway, I finished it and I have to say the result um, has worked out much better than I even I imagined. Um, I thought it was going to work but I didn't realise it would work quite so well. Um, in my own humble opinion, I guess. Um, so some of the tools in Dulux Paint, you know, sometimes they might say, oh, it's it's fancy, but they're not very useful. Like, I've always kind of thought maybe like the bend tools that you had in the brush menu for like, you know, warping brushes on sort of like the horizontal or vertical axis. Um, you know, it's nowhere near as flexible as what Photoshop does, but then why do you expect a, a nearly 30-year-old package necessary to have the same power as Photoshop in terms of warping brushes? But Actually, I've been able to achieve some really quite interesting results just by using them carefully and um, just seeing how it worked out with the animation, really. And it's really worked out rather well. I'm I'm pleased with the result. It conveys what I wanted to, this idea that there is somebody travelling backwards, shall we say, and that there's a bit of a glitch, shall we say, going on. Um, um, I'm not going to say any more than that because I really don't want to give too much away about future saviours. Um... You know, I, I think there's going to be some real surprises down the line for people who have been following the story of it. But anyway, yeah, this has worked out really well. So, yeah, very happy with this. Well, there's the final result, folks. Um, yeah, really pleased with how this turned out, as I said in the previous clip. So it just goes to show that messing about this stuff can be a great deal of fun. Um, I'd love to show you more about the development of uh, the character of Saki, uh, as well as other characters in Future Saviors, but again, if I share those now, I'm just going to spoil the first chapter, but I do have some very interesting videos coming up about how I have been developing my style in the past year, and also uh, the process of character development. I'm going to show you some of the very early sketches, some of the very earliest ideas that I had uh, for Saki, for example, and where she came from, and likewise, possibly also with Hisao. Um, so I just don't want to you know complicate things it'd be uh, probably easier for me to show you how one character has come to fruition shall we say rather than dotting about but we'll see how it goes but certainly some very interesting videos that I've got coming up which are going to involve some of the processes involving pixel art using the Amiga and stuff like that 
but also very much about the sort of the, the paper manga based processes as well so i hope you found that enjoyable I've got some really other interesting videos coming out soon i've recently come back from uh, a very interesting trip around many parts of japan and also some uh, interesting videos on q a's and so forth i need to catch up with those so i hope you found this interesting if you have any questions by all means leave them in the comments below but i guess that all remains for me to say is see you soon peace take it away saki <laughs> now what do i do do i just sit there looking at the screen like i'm watching it with you didn't think that far ahead peace